Welcome everyone to a Geometry Khan Academy. We're doing rotate shapes today. I am Mr. West. Let's go ahead and get started. Here we have quadrilateral pony, P-O-N-Y, is rotated 180 degrees about the origin. Draw the image of this rotation. All right, now, you could memorize a chart. There's a chart that they have uh, when it talks about if you have a positive 90, negative 270, 180, um, negative, uh, what is it, negative 90 or positive 270 rotations. They have this little chart for the X and Y and, and how they change, etc. You could memorize that. I'm not a big fan of that personally because I like to learn or teach a method that allows you to do a rotation no matter if you're doing about the origin or about a point. And that method is by connecting vertices. Now, to the center of rotation. I'm going to move that out of the way a second, uh, and we're going to consider the point O. The point O is a good one to start with. Now, here's my center. That's important to consider. And I'm going to connect my center with my point O. And I'm going to rotate that 180 degrees. Now, because I don't have a compass uh, or a protractor, I don't know exactly where that's going to end up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the coordinate plane. Okay? It's hard to know exactly where is 180 degrees from that when we're rotating, so I'm going to use the coordinate plane to my advantage. I'm going to use the horizontal component, and I'm going to use a vertical component to arrive at my point O. Okay, now that I have my point O, I'm going to really just concentrate on this horizontal component that's attached to my center, okay? So if you think about it, think of it as like, Think about it, you have this like two pieces of wood that are attached to this rotating uh, thing or two metal components that are attached to this arm, okay? And this arm, we are gonna, let me change the colors actually so you, it matches what I've already drawn, okay? So imagine I have this arm, okay? This metal or wooden component attached here and I'm gonna rotate it 180 degrees. Well, I'm gonna worry about this red part of the arm rotating because the thing that rotates is this center bit right there okay so i'm going to rotate this 180 degrees how do i do that well here's 90 i get to 90 and then i arrive on the the y-axis and then i'm going to rotate it again and i get to that's 90 that's 90 so in total that would be 180 so that's 180 degrees this is how i like to do rotations and it's a little bit of uh, effort up front, but I promise once you get the hang of it, it is way easier than just memorizing. So that's 180 degrees. Now as I rotate that 180 degrees, my new red line will be there, but where is my green arrow going to be? A common mistake is the green arrow is still going to be pointing up, but that wouldn't be right because that would mean that my L was pointing to the left initially. It's not pointing to the left of the red, it's pointing to the right of the red. So if I'm looking at my red bar there, it's gotta be pointing to the right of it as it sticks out from the center. As it sticks out from the center, it's pointing to the right, so that means now that it's pointing, the red's pointing to the right, it's gonna be sticking out down. Okay, so down is where it's gonna be pointing. So I'm gonna be rotating this down. Two to the right, three down. Just as before, it was two to the left, three up. So that is going to be my new location for O. It was two to the left, three up. So I'm now I'm going to go two to the right, three down. And that's going to be my new location for O. I'm going to repeat this process for each one of these coordinates. Okay. So I'm going to go from my center. And now I'm going to point N. Okay. I'm going to point N. So I'm going to count to the left first. Oh, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I count six to the left. And how many up? One, two, three. Okay, so I'm gonna rotate that 180 degrees. And now I'm gonna be pointing to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, notice how before it's sticking out uh, to uh, the upward position, but now I'm pointing to the right. It's gonna be the exact opposite. It's gonna be in the downward position. So I need to go three down. So my second point is gonna be there, six comma negative three, right there, okay? Notice how N to O is a uh, flat line. So my N to O prime has also 
got to be a flat line across, which it is. Now I have to do y. I'm going to do y one. I'm going to do one more, which is y, and then I'm going to show you another way to do this. Okay, so I'm going to cross this out, erase this. We're still rotating 180 degrees, but now we're going one, two, three, four, five, five, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going six up this time, five to the left. So I'm not going to be going six to the right this time. I'm going to be going one, two, three, four, five, and then I'm going to be going down six since I'm going the opposite direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm going to end up right there for our next point, which is going to be y prime, right there. Now, another way to do this problem is once you get your orientation set, like for example with N and O, I can just redraw the shape uh, in the proper proportions based on that rotation. What do I mean by that? Well, notice how O and P is a straight vertical line. Well, that means I need to make it a straight vertical line there. Also notice how P is above Y. So if we're reflecting it and now it's facing down, it needs to be below Y to make an obtuse angle between N, Y, and P. So N, Y, and P had that obtuse angle. So here also needs to be an obtuse angle. Conversely, let me look at this. PON was a right angle, so PON needs to be a right angle also, and we are set. We got our rotation correctly. So you can do a couple points and then just redraw it based on uh, that. Now, negative 270, this is the one thing we do need, uh, I think it makes it easier, is negative direction, we're talking about this way. So negative 270 goes like this. If we have our coordinate plane drawn here, each little quadrant is 90 degrees, but it's also the same as a positive 90. I think it's much easier to do 90 degree rotations than it is to do 270. It's less to calculate. And the converse is also true. A positive, this would be, hold on, let me label this now. So this was negative 270. This is positive 270, which is gonna be the same as negative 90. This is just for reference. I'm gonna erase this. I don't like how it looks. This was positive 90, okay. So if we're doing negative 270, it's all this, also the same thing as a positive 90 or counterclockwise in 90 degrees about the origin, okay? So again, we're about the origin here, so let's highlight the origin, and now we're gonna connect our point P. So you need to start somewhere. I'm gonna start with P, one, two, and then one, two, three, up. So I'm gonna go 90 degrees, Okay, 90 degrees, if I'm 90 degrees, I'm pointing to the right. 90 degrees from there, I'm gonna be pointing up. So now my red line here is gonna be pointing up one, two, and I'm gonna keep this green arrow attached to the left. It's gonna to point to the left now that I've rotated it. So my new point for P prime is gonna be at negative three comma two, P prime. Negative three comma two. Okay, N. So, and I'm gonna rotate now, and I can get an idea of where that looks like. I'm gonna go one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So as I rotate that, I'm gonna go two up and seven to the right. Okay, let me do that in purple, actually. It's hard to see with all these lines. Let me get rid of this. So I'm gonna do this in purple so you can see it. I'll start in yellow. So I go one, two, and then seven down. But now I'm rotating at 90 degrees. So the thing that was pointed to the right, okay, this was pointing to the right. I rotated at 90 degrees and now it's gonna be pointing up. And this little bar is gonna be pointing to the right instead of down like it is there, okay? So I'm gonna go up to and to the right seven to arrive at my new point for N. So N prime is now at this point seven comma two, that's N prime n prime seven comma two all right now notice how n uh p and i form a right angle so i need to have it something like this okay but i think it's up here so let me take a look here uh yes it's going to be something like that again this is where you can redraw the shape if you're really good at imagining how it's rotated that's fine but notice here okay i really should 
or just redraw this dimension here. So let me just redraw it. Okay, so to get to I, I'm gonna, this is the important part, is having this attached here, and it's seven across, and it's seven down. So I'm gonna go rotate it, go seven and seven, and it's gonna be over here, okay? Um, one thing that needs to be maintained is this distance right here uh, of this bottom side is one, two, three, four, five. How many units is that? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So n to i has to be five units even after the rotation. Okay, so this is what our new shape is. Okay, we got a couple more here. Rotated negative 270, so that is a positive 90 degrees. Okay, as we demonstrated earlier, you can rewind the video and go back to that to see the difference uh, between them. But this is a positive 90 or 90 degrees counterclockwise. One way I like to do this, I'm gonna teach you guys a quick trick, is if I'm rotating, 90 degrees counterclockwise, okay? So it's like this, okay? Here's my, here's my coordinate plane, it looks like this. I'm basically going one quadrant over. So if I'm looking here at this point L, I know I'm gonna be one quadrant over. It's gonna be from the third to the fourth. If I have point K, I know it's gonna be one quadrant over. Same thing with this one, it's gonna be in this quadrant. And then this, quad, this J is gonna be one quadrant over. So I know all these are gonna be in those spots somewhere. So let me go ahead and get that situated. I know two points are gonna be here and then J is gonna be somewhere in there. Now my shape looks all goofed up, but I can at least make a little progress here. Okay, so let me start with point L. Point L was a relationship of one, two, three to the left. Okay, that's my attached point to the origin, and then I'm going one, uh, let me take this green, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, down. The part that's attached to the center is the part that rotates. So this red is gonna rotate one, two, three, down, and now it needs to go how much to the right? Seven to the right, now that I've rotated it. Think of it as the, the another way to think of rotations is the, the Buddhist symbol for peace, okay? Other uh, fascist organizations have used this, uh, emblem similar to that, but this spoke wheel, I like to call it, is a great way to kind of remember how these rotations work. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and erase that. Don't wanna have that up on my screen too long. And then I have here the new location for L prime. It's seven comma negative three. Let me go ahead and move that one first. So seven comma negative three, and then M. Now, when it's a three and three relationship, that's always easy. Notice how it was a three by three, for M here, okay, so three by three for M. So M is here, three by three, so it's gonna stay three by three and it's gonna end up right where I have J right now. So J, three by three, is where gonna, my new M is gonna be. And that means my, hmm, okay, my new M. So it's gotta hold on like this, there we go. Just had to rearrange the dots a little bit. So three, three by three. And then a two by two relationship, I'm gonna redraw the shape. K was a two by two orientation away from M. So I'm gonna maintain that relationship up here and go two by two to get to my K prime. So two by two like that was my K. So I'm gonna go K prime, same deal. Now for my last one, which is J. J was straight vertical from M. I'm redrawing the shape. I could do the spoke wheel just like I did before. Okay, I could do the spoke wheel, but I'm choosing to make it a little bit uh, uh, little more different. Actually, let's see. It was three by three, so I can just go three by three again. So J was three by three, so it can be three by three in this uh, spot over there. And I'm gonna show you what I was talking about earlier with the uh, relationship to M. So J and M was straight vertical, so as it rotates, it's gonna be horizontal. Notice how that's diagonal, that's straight horizontal. So it's gotta be straight horizontal, and that's another way to check my answer. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna try to finish up quickly with this last one, just so you can get the hang of it. Now, as I'm doing these, I'm doing 180. When you have 180, I think that's the easiest. You just change the coordinates. So if you had a negative two, um, and you can do the same thing with the spoke wheel. Let me just show that real fast. I'm running out of time, that's why I'm talking fast. So if I have right here, oh, this one's the easiest. So if it's right on the axis, it's the easiest. I have my distance there, six. And as I rotate that 180 degrees, I go 90. That's 90, and I go another 90 to get over here. That's 180 degrees. And it doesn't matter if you go negative or positive, you get to the same spot. That's why I did initially the positive one. And I end up negative six in this direction to get my new location of T 
prime, which is my rotation. Okay, now that I have that, I'm gonna try to just, uh, another way to do this for, uh, for 180 is to flip the, make the X coordinate negative and the Y coordinate negative, the opposite of what it currently is. So my X coordinate for O was a negative two. That's my warning that I need to finish. So it needs to be a positive two now. Then it was a negative five for the Y, so it's gotta be a positive five for the Y. Then my P was a negative two for the X, so it's gotta be a positive two, and it was a positive five, so it's gotta be a negative five. So I just reverse it. And there I go. That's rotate shapes. I also have a Khan Academy on the advanced version of rotate shapes, which is not about the origin. You can use the same spokes wheel concept uh, if you want. Uh, I, again, I avoided the, the chart because I'm not a fan of memorization. I think it's more important if you know how to do it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching.